So Hess's law um, basically states that if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, um, the delta H for the overall reaction is equal to the sum of the delta H values for those individual steps. So let's say, for example, um, in the example we're looking at down here, we have two thermochemical equations. Okay, one here is for the combustion of uh, methane to gaseous CO2 and gaseous H2O, um, and it has a specific enthalpy value. Um, we also have here thermochemical, thermochemical equation showing us the change in phase from gaseous to liquid H2O and its corresponding enthalpy value. So these two pieces on their own um, are obviously of importance. Um, they've been established in a lab. Somebody's calculated these values. It's something that um, we could potentially find in a table um, or could experimentally potentially determine in a laboratory setting. Now, let's say that I wasn't interested in just this reaction alone, nor the one below it. But let's say that I was interested in knowing the delta H value for the combustion of methane into gaseous CO2 and H2O in its liquid state. Okay, notice these two equations, this one right here and this one right here, look very similar. However, notice the states of matter. Okay, of the liquid versus gaseous product here are different. Okay, so the overall reaction that I actually want to solve the enthalpy for is this one here, but I only have the information from these two reactions that I may have uh, carried out experimentally in a lab or someone else may have. So the neat thing about Hess's law is that I can use these two equations in order to get the enthalpy of this equation. Now, the Thermochemical equations must sum to the overall equation that you're looking for. So if I took all the reactants from each of these thermochemical equations and added them together, I would have these on the left-hand side. If I did that same thing with my re uh, products, I would have this on the right-hand side. Now, what we do with these is we then see if we can simplify. Is there anything on the left-hand side that can cancel out something on the right-hand side? And if we look at this, the two moles of gaseous H2O and two moles of gaseous H2O can both be simplified. Now that we've simplified that, if we rewrite the chemical equation, we get the desired equation um, that we were uh, wanting to obtain in the first place. So these two chemical equations are able to be summed to the overall equation that we desire here. Okay, so because of that, we can also sum the two delta H values that were provided for each of those to get our overall delta H for the chemical equation that we desired. So the negative 802 kilojoules plus the negative 88 kilojoules um, from this thermochemical equation will sum to the negative 908 kilojoules. So, what you need to remember here is that the thermochemical equations that you're utilizing in Hess's law, these items must sum to the overall equation that you're looking for. The other thing you, you should understand is that the enthalpy values that you have from each of those thermochemical, thermochemical equations will sum to the overall um, delta H value for the chemical equation that you're actually looking for. Um, so guys, when we're using Hess's law, we're paying attention to the states of matter, we're paying attention to the position of reactants and products, um, and we're making any necessary adjustments, um, as we'll see in the next few slides. Okay, so let's look at this example that they've given us here. It um, says to determine the heat of reaction um, for this reaction here below. Okay, I have four uh, moles of NH3 in the gaseous state plus five moles of O2 gaseous state, um, giving me four, um, NO, four moles of NO in its gaseous state and six moles of H2O in its gaseous state. Now, they've given me a set of reactions 
Okay, this is a completely appropriate way um, to solve for this. And I need to utilize these three equations and these three delta H values in order to get the overall equation. So remember, I'm going to need these equations to sum to this equation in order to get the delta H um, of reaction for this specific example. So let's go ahead and let's look at how we're going to do this. Okay, so when we're dealing with these problems, we're always going to be paying attention to what our overall goal is. Remember, we need to modify these equations so that the overall equation will be what we get when we sum the above. So if we take a look at these equations, let's look, go ahead and let's look at this first one. Okay, notice NH3 is on the right hand side. Okay, NH3 on, on, in this thermochemical equation is a product. However, NH3 is a reactant in this situation. NH3 doesn't show up in any of the other two thermochemical equations provided, so we know that this equation is going to need to be flipped. Okay, so if we reverse this equation, remember, if we ch reverse the equation, the sign is going to change. Okay, so that's the first thing to think about. Now, if we also look at the way that this equation is balanced, how many moles of NH3 do we have here? We have two, but we actually need four. So in addition to flipping this equation, we're also going to have to multiply through by two. So all of the coefficients here are going to be doubled, as well as the delta H value is going to be doubled. doubled. So if we look at what we've done here, we've doubled the coefficients. Okay, so we've multiplied everything by 2, and we've also flipped it. Notice it's the reverse reaction of what we have here. So if we come over here to our delta H value, we will notice that our sign is now positive, and we've doubled the value of the delta H. Okay, so if we go down and we look at this next equation here, okay, the next thermochemical equation provided, notice we have N2 and O2. Okay, O2 is on the left-hand side, so that looks like it's okay. Um, but NO is on the product side. If we look at our goal equation, notice that the um, NO is on the right-hand side. So this equation doesn't need to be flipped. Okay, so the sign of our delta H here is not going to be changed. Now, if we look at the coefficient here, though, NO has a 4 in front of it. The NO for this equation only has a 2. So we know that we're going to need to multiply this equation's coefficients as well as its delta H by 2. So if you go down here, notice we've multiplied everything through by 2 to get the appropriate um, values, and we've multiplied the delta H by 2 to give us our new delta H value that corresponds to the coefficients of that specific equation. Okay, and then this last equation that we need to look at, notice H2O is on the right hand side, O2 is on the left hand side, everything seems to be in the appropriate location, so no flipping is necessary. However, if we look at the coefficient here for H2O, it's only 2. Notice we need a 6 up here. So we need to multiply all the coefficients here by 3. So we've multiplied everything through by 3. And we've also multiplied our delta H value by 3 to give us our overall um, new delta H for this specific equation. So now that we've uh, flipped and multiplied all of the um, equations provided to match up with this equation, we then need to do a summation process. So if we have all of these once again lined up and we sum all the reactants on the left hand side and write them out and all the products on the right hand side and write them out, we can then utilize this equation to see if we get our overall equation um, that's being desired. So the way we figure that out is once we've established our reactants and products on the right hand side, we cancel anything that shows up on both sides. Okay, so I have six moles of gaseous hydrogen gas on both the reactants and product side. Okay, I have two moles of nitrogen gas on both the reactants and product side, and that leaves us with the equation below. Okay, and this equation matches the overall equation that they are wanting us to have and wanting us to solve for. So now that we have this overall equation and the uh, thermochemical equations that were provided does it do in fact sum to the overall equation we're looking for, um, we can now use the delta H values, the summation of all of these that we've calculated, 
to give us our new delta H for this specific reaction. Okay, so um, basically we've done all the flipping earlier on um, that we discussed and looked at on our last slide. We then cancel everything out and make sure that it matches the overall equation of the equation that they're asking for. Remember to pay attention to the states of matter. If they're not in the same phase, if they're not gaseous, when they're supposed to be gaseous, then you don't actually have the equation that you need. Okay, so there's, there's something missing. Um, and once we've solved and shown that we can get this overall equation from these individual thermal uh, thermochemical equation pieces, we can sum the stepwise delta H values to give us the overall de delta H of this specific reaction. Um, a question that may come around uh, with this type of problem is also, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Um, and if you look at the sign of your delta H, assuming this is a constant pressure, your delta H and your Q um, are proportional, and because of that fact, the sine of delta H here will be negative, so the sine of Q will also be negative. A negative Q is going to imply that you have an exothermic reaction. So, just make sure that you're paying attention to the pieces that they give you. Make sure that the coefficients of your products match up. Make sure that if you flip something, you also flip the sign. If you multiply through by a coefficient, your delta H has to be multiplied through by the coefficient. All of the equations that you're utilizing must give you the overall equation that you're solving for, and then you can add the delta H values from those individual steps to give you the overall delta H for the specific reaction.